this whole week, okay, this whole goddamn week, I've had nothing but issues with, um, with the technology. Like last night's was almost the last straw for me. It seemed <laughs> like you were in a bad headspace last night, buddy. I was in a terrible headspace. I, like, this, like I said, this whole week something's going on. You know what? Things should be turning around soon. Well, it all started. It all started with a goddamn cord. Oh, this was a cord. Ooh, my levels are. So you guys should be able to see your levels, right? Mm-hmm. And you can see that mine are a lot higher than yours. I'm just going to line maybe a little bit. Maybe that'll be better. Yeah. As long as we're all kind of looking the same. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the F Word Podcast. I'm your host, G, and with me is Vass and Anthony once again for what is, uh, I think, number five, week number five? I think week four, isn't it? No, oh, week four. Five. No, this is week five. Oh, my God. Yeah. Time has lost all it meaning. It feels like, yeah, it's true. I, I actually thought it was longer than week five, but I think because that one week we ended up recording in the regular space, maybe that's why. Oh, yeah, that was like five, the first. When technically uh-huh. it would have been six. Yeah, yeah, maybe, and it was just me and Vass too. So, mm-hmm. who the hell knows? Um, yes, um, surprising amount of traction on our shit recently, which I'm very happy to see. So clearly, putting some type of image or some type of video instead of just an I- single image on YouTube is helping. So that's good, and gives people something to watch because the views on that have been up, and Instagram's been doing good, right, Anthony? Mm-hmm. Awesome. And Vass got his job back. <laughs> yeah, there was a little bit of a hiatus there. So where, you know, they were doing like layoffs and no callbacks and that kind of stuff. And it was there was potential, but it wouldn't have been for a lot longer. So glad it worked out and it is what it is. And luckily our province is doing as good as it is. So that also maybe is a factor. So yeah. Yeah. Good stuff all around. Yeah. The province the province thing is really good, like in terms of our numbers, because we've the whole entire province has seventy two cases, reported cases. Mm-hmm. And, and last week every, it was like the last three days, I think something. it's exactly. And cause every day this past little bit has been like one one case confirmed and then thirteen or fourteen almost a day recovered. Mm-hmm. I think that's that's the way that it's been going back. Cause it's yeah, it was at one eighty, now it's at seven it was at eighty nine, I think, yesterday, now it's at seventy two. So, uh, so hopefully we I guess can it go helps outside being in the soon. middle of nowhere. Because yeah, well, I'm getting stir crazy. I'm gonna be 19 in like two weeks. No, oh, I'm not gonna be able to go oh, anywhere. No, uh, drink it home like a normal alcoholic. <laughs> I can't even have my first drink yeah. on the show with you boys. <laughs> oh man, that's actually pretty shitty. And Bass, hopefully this thing clears up by your birthday because you turned 30 this year. I suppose I do. Yeah, Jeez. so it's not uh, your 30, Anthony's 19, two milestones that unfortunately we won't be able to, I don't think we'll be able to celebrate as per usual. Probably not. Which is actually super, super shitty, but we can always celebrate them later on down the road. Mm-hmm. Birthday so, episode. Yeah, exactly. And May 6th um, is still a little bit away. So, mm-hmm. you know, provided realistically, if we're all just doing our part, then we could all still like hang out. Like if we're all mm-hmm. being careful, but there's always that risk of what if, which is super crazy. Um, so yeah, there's actually been some news recently, which has been sweet. Mm-hmm. I haven't had anything new. We finished that Star Wars puzzle, and now we feel empty inside. Like it took us so long, and it was so much work, and then we finished it, and we just sat down, and we're like, now what? Because it's such a hard ass puzzle. You're having those um, graduation goggles. But yeah. Mm-hmm. I will remember. Yeah, we took it up. <laughs> Sorry, what was that, Vass? I was just singing. <laughs> what, what was that, Vass? <laughs> no, no, no. Please, just sing, graduated. Run, run sing for the rest of the class. No, I already did it. And he left them here on no, the playback. You... Oh, okay. <laughs> you mean I will remember you. That's the there one. There you go. Um, so, yeah, other than that, we've done fuck all. Like, oh. I've been playing AC Origins, nothing new. I haven't watched anything new. Still watching House. I mean, we're, we've put on some movies before we go to sleep, but it's like it took those us three count. days to watch Gladiator and We Own the Night. Yeah, mm-hmm. those don't, those don't See, count. and I still put them in the list because we watched them. Uh, fair enough, I guess. Anyways. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then 
I'm aside from the fact that I've had two meltdowns because of technology. We waited for this goddamn cord to come in from Walmart for a month. Okay, for an extra monitor for Soph, mm -hmm. so she can have two monitors for her work because it'd make her life a lot easier. And the fucking thing doesn't work. And it's not even that; it's the laptop itself is such a piece of shit that the HDMI port does not work anymore. Oh, I was losing it, gentlemen, like actually losing my shit. And then there was like files in my work that weren't saved anymore, so I had to redo those. And then yesterday we tried to record this thing, and the laptop just stopped, like connecting to the internet literally just stopped connecting to the internet it was just like you know what you want to try to do something nope click done lost it so angry if you want to make so, god laugh tell me your plans a lot better I, I i didn't even say anything to anybody that's the shitty thing it was like if i would have if i would have made this gigantic plan then i understand because i put it out there in the ether for it to get demolished but uh didn't i hope your guys's week has been better uh well i'm finishing up uni two classes are already done uh well three technically but i got my grades back for two of the classes and super fucking surprise like i last semester super mediocre like a super like not awful but like not great marks this semester mm. i finished math with an 80 percent nice i finished nice. english with a 75 and i got my essay back from english and it was about Coraline. and i didn't end up like i think i read eight out of the 13 chapters and my professor left mark saying uh very engaging thank you for writing such an engaging essay in this trying time i wish you'd went more into the book like with some <laughs> citing but i still got a 75 on the essay i'm like yeah well you know <laughs> what didn't have to i didn't have to finish it i always have that kind of theme with english where I never finish the book for my essay, but I somehow always do like really well in the essay because I just kind of get those key points and like this is good enough to just run with it. Nice. Yeah, I think if you if you nailed down the overall theme, mm -hmm. then a lot of them are searching for if you just did you understand it and then if you can cite it properly too. Mm -hmm. So if you pick a theme and you're enough, you can cite enough of it, then you'll probably be fine. Well, you know, I watched the Which movie. In this case, too. you were fine, so I, I I knew how it ended to a certain extent. Fair, 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 fair. Uh, Vass, uh, aside from getting your job back, yeah, it's I don't know. Other than that, it's been a busy slash slow week, I guess you can say in in its own way. Uh, haven't added too much to the roster, especially movies wise. More so like watching uh, Spartacus, uh, playing. Need for Speed still and Lost here and there. So, and then like those nighttime movies that like just before bed, it's like I'm on the Harry Potter series. So, yeah. Just call it the Harry oh, yeah. Potter lullabies to go to bed. Um, yeah, we noticed that uh, Spartacus, because we actually wanted to start watching that uh -huh. again. Um, it's no longer on Netflix. So, we'll just have to, we have other ways of watching it mm -hmm. now officially, but. Uh, yeah, we just wanted to. Yeah, I was really choked about that, and, and I was like, oh, "Okay, Prime has it, but you have to get the Stars app." Stars, exactly. Yeah, you have to like. Apply, uh, have sorry, to the channel. Sorry, you have to buy the channel for it, and that's like six bucks on its own. Um, which so obviously isn't just for Spartacus, but there's other shows on there. But you have to use it to the max. So, yeah. so Prime has it, but yeah. you need to buy a different channel. No, oh. yeah. So essentially, Stars has yeah. There, there's uh, actually quite a few of them. Yeah, Stars has real estate in Amazon Prime, essentially, but you have to buy that channel. I don't know. I don't think it's live stuff, but it's like any of their archives. That's what you have to pay for. So, yep, yeah, right, yeah, and and they have other channels that are like that too. Where I think there's there's a good chunk of their shit that's behind paywall essentially oh, so yeah. you pay for the regular service and then there's like the excess stuff that you can get almost like dlc for streaming yeah basically which whatever it's fine make find ways to do it find <laughs> ways to make money yeah exactly but yeah that's no, yeah that's... and i'm not paying for my amazon yeah. well i'm a student so i get six months of it free so whenever i need to order something i'm just gonna sign up for that and just get my six month free two day shipping and Amazon Prime subscription. There you go. Mm -hmm. Not a bad deal. Not a bad deal. Nice. Pay three thousand, get a free six Not month. Not a Amazon. bad deal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, 
yeah, I'm gonna th- th- some other stuff that came up this week, or some other stuff outside of what we were watching this week. Um, the Dune pictures came out, yeah, and everyone's like, "Oh, this looks amazing." I'm like, they're, they're, "They're set photos. Like, it looks good. It's probably gonna be good. Good actors. I'm I'm not over the moon with it because I'm also not a huge Dune fan. Like, not a huge. Sorry, it's not that I'm not a Dune fan. I just I've only seen it once, years and years and years ago, and I'm not as hardcore as people are. Apart, apparently, Dune's like this big, big thing now. It's got a cult people following, are super right? Excited for. So, it's one of those. Yeah, but it seems like people that would be not in the cult following yeah. are super excited for it. Hmm. You never but know. Whatever. I don't even know what Dune is. The idea behind it right is super sweet. Oh, well, tell me the idea. That yeah, take a look at them. Okay, um, let me let me pull it up. Let me Wikipedia this stuff. So I'm going to go Dune Explained and see what happens. Uh, it's Imagine society set roughly 20,000 years in the future, uh, 10,191, and humans beings have spread out and colonized planets throughout the universe. On the planet Caladan, Duke Leto of the House of Atreides is preparing to leave for his new position. So it's it almost sounds... it's What I understand from this synopsis really quickly is that it's almost like a Game of Thrones style yeah. thing, but with planets in a de- like in a desert world. Um, there's a spice drug that's extremely popular with wealthy people. Um, there's it's like, like uh, there's a class system, obviously. There's planet stuff. There's attacks. There's all sorts of stuff. So, and yeah, this is a it's, movie it's quite products. involved, actually. Yeah, it was originally a movie, and they re- and then Denis Villeneuve, I believe, is the one that's doing it hmm. for like the remake of it. Yeah. So sounds interesting, and it's gonna be split into two movies. Like, if I'm still working at the theater, I'll probably see yeah. it. But other than oh. that, I don't think I'd go to my way. You know, like, the when I'm the more I've read on it this past week, like, it is super, super interesting. And it's going to be a... My guess is they're going to use it as an allegory for what's going on right now in society and class system again and all of that stuff. Like, they're just... It's it's going to go that route. And I believe that's just the way that the the show was, but no. I don't know enough about it to really speak on it. Um, Daredevil is going back to Marvel in November. Mm-hmm. So that's sweet. Nice. I can't believe it's been three years the already. Going back. Crazy, right? Well, like that is actually, because I remember like, it just seems really fresh and it seems like it would have sort of happened like last year or something like that. It doesn't seem like that it just, or it doesn't seem that it's been three years already since the show got canceled because people are still talking about it. It's, Pretty much like the Snyder yeah. cuts, huh. in the sense that people just don't shut up about it. But I'm one of the Snyder cut people, so I guess I can't really throw shade. Yeah, you're you're a hardcore when it comes to it's the gonna happen eventually. But that's gonna be sweet. I I hope they I hope they bring back as much of the original cast as they can. For sure, they have to bring back um, Charlie Cox and uh, Vincent D'Onofrio. Yeah. If they don't, oh, and the guy that played um, Bullseye. Uh, bullseye yeah. yeah well if they just if they don't i just totally. feel like it's uh it's a lost opportunity because i don't know if they want to make the show canon i feel like they could make the show canon and have very little repercussions in the sense that they have to kind of rewrite things or make or like adapt changes to the story because the story was pretty linear then really intertwined with the mcu except for the occasional easter egg so if they kind of don't want to totally wipe the whole slate clean i feel like they shouldn't and they should just continue with either a new show or just a movie that continues from where season three left off a movie would be good i think i think that's a vast i don't know disney plus yeah not to cut off vast but i think disney plus could be a play because they want more shows but i also don't think they want to overload their shows with so many I don't know. They're lacking in content right now, so I mean, anything would be good for them. That's very true. Yeah, yeah. But my biggest yeah, issue—they need, they need some shit. My biggest like worry, I guess, is that Daredevil was obviously not a PG show, and mm-hmm. Disney Plus is like only PG shows. I think Simpsons is the most edgy show. Like Mandalorian isn't really a kid show, but it's still kind of like it's more tame than Daredevil was. Yeah, they'd have to create like a Disney 18 plus or something like that. Disney plus plus. <laughs> Disney plus plus or something like that. Yeah, because like, 
they're gonna have something in their archives that's gonna be for adults only. Um, well, Moonlight sure. is a pretty yeah, like a dark character. I think that's a Disney Plus show, was it not? Or was that gonna be a well, Netflix? Yeah. Uh, I doesn't think so. uh, what you call it? Isn't Daredevil mm-hmm. or sorry, uh, Deadpool? Deadpool is, that, is not on Disney Plus, I don't think. But it's but it's Disney. It is now. It is now. Mm-hmm. So they're gonna maybe have to create like a subgenre or somehow like, I mean that's up to parent controls at the end of the day, right? So Disney won't take any ownership on that. They'll provide the software like the the way to do that and say like, well, just lock your kids out of this section of Disney, um, mature kind of thing, and and that's it. That's all they need to do. Well, from what I remember in the past, I believe they were talking about uh, Deadpool and all the other like Logan films and stuff like that that they acquired mm-hmm. from Fox yep. would go to Hulu because Disney oh, owns Hulu. Yeah, that's but right. if they do that, I feel it's just it's I stupid. Feel, I feel they're shooting themselves in the foot if they do that. Mm-hmm. Like You have this whole platform and I mean, yes, a lot of the stuff is in the more kid and family friendly side, but you know, you, this is how you can attract more. It's like, oh, they got this on there. Great. Well, if you want to compete with Netflix, you can't be yeah. a PG-13 streaming service going up against uh, a company that has Stranger Things, Black Mirror, all these darker shows. Like Stranger Things is one of the darker shows, but it's still like accessible for kids to watch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's kind of like I would lump it in with like a Goosebumps kind of ordeal, but you can't really compete if you're going to be diluting or just diluting the right word diluting your like kind of properties and essentially competing against yourself with hulu because i am not going to buy hulu yeah i have disney plus so exactly and eventually disney should disney plus should or eventually yeah it will have so much stuff on there that it'll be the premier side i just think they just started too soon like they Mm -hmm. should have released with way more they're in a rush to get it out with mandalorian yeah. And that was pretty much all they had going for them, and it's still all they have going for them. Like Clone Wars, I don't think is really, yeah, doing much except for the people that really love Clone Wars. Mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah, they're, and now they're not going to be doing anything until late 2020 because I think their shows might be getting pushed back too. I thought yep, those were filmed. Uh, I think I know Mandalorian is done because they filmed it last year. Falcon yep. and Winter Soldier, I think, is still on for September or August or whatever. But I'm not sure if they were... Because I still saw it, like set photos a couple months ago. So I'm not sure if they were done filming. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Well, we'll they haven't announced any... They announced the movies getting delayed. They haven't announced the shows, so... Yeah. I don't know. Who knows? Um, But with all of that, they definitely... I think getting Daredevil will increase their stock quite a bit. And then expanding that world, especially when they bring Moon Knight in there, because that fits right in. Um, and then I guess that'll kind of goes into our next topic, where Netflix is now worth more than Disney by hmm. a, not a substantial amount, but by a decent amount. The actual numbers that I got, this is from a few days ago, though, so my guess is they're different. Um, so it's ahead Netflix's total capitalized market reached $187.3 billion, which is just ahead of Disney's $186.6 billion valuation. And it's probably going to go up because of, uh, of the virus. And I think it was like a year ago or a couple of years ago where more of these streaming services were coming out that Netflix's stock was actually going down slowly. Mm-hmm. So this seems to like obviously boosted everything most of disney stuff because disney plus isn't able to to compete yet like the there's probably a lot, a lot of people jumping ship after and then they'll sign back up again for mandalorian season two mm-hmm. so yeah i just thought that was super interesting i think it's just funny because again like we were talking about it on the show how netflix was losing money and we were like talking about it saying it wouldn't last and eventually netflix would be on the rise again and now the coronavirus basically save netflix in the sense that everybody's in their house binging all that content and i'm just honestly quite like i'm happy i'm happy for netflix because i've been binging a lot of shows uh, i'm gonna finish you season two coming up soon i finished all of black mirror last week 
there's just a lot of good shows on Netflix that I haven't seen because I've been busy with life. And now is the time to binge watch all of them. Yeah, I'm I'm not in the camp of like, I'm happy for Netflix because like, I've never had a reason to feel bad for Netflix because they've made so much money. Mm-hmm. But and like it's mostly like it just kind of sucks for everybody else that was even trying to compete with Disney at this point because Disney like ended up being the top, staying at the top for a bit, and now the only thing competing against it is streaming because like the whole movie theater world is collapsing. I think AMC is like prepping to file for bankruptcy, and there's a couple of the theaters that are going to follow suit, and then there was reports of a theater actually possibly opening up in a month, but. Mm-hmm it's so upside it's so crazy like when you really think about what this is going to do to 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 that industry in general and the fact that a company like amc is looking to permanently close their theaters and go bankrupt yeah it is all the while yeah yeah, all the while the streaming services are going to be just going bonkers because eventually you're going to run out of shit on netflix and then you're just going to get other stuff Mm -hmm. um Sam Raimi is officially directing Doctor Strange. That's pretty cool. I'm happy about that. That's good. It's official now because I know for the longest time it's been rumored, and I'm actually pretty pretty hyped because this could open the door for uh, the Spider Verse to come into the MCU. No, I don't think Sam Raimi is going to be have anything to do with. Well, this is the multiverse, right? There's a multiverse <laughs> here. And yeah, but the multiverse doesn't apply to legal legal uh what is it legal ramifications in the real world and um what is it what's the fucking term i have uh, oh rights <laughs> character rights yeah but sony is partnering with marvel and sony does not want to not partner with marvel because it's very apparent that they were kind of shooting their pants they had a backup deal where even tom holland said that the both companies like sony want to go back with marvel i'm not it's a very long shot but i'm just saying <laughs> If anyone's going to bring Tobey Maguire back, it's going to be Sam Raimi in this movie. I don't know, man. I don't know. I mean, it'd be hilarious if that did happen. I was actually watching a video. It was a it was an I, uh, Instagram funny video of like Tobey Maguire joins um, the fight for New York. Mm-hmm. And it was just like a, they clipped in Tobey Maguire eating the hot dog from the second Spider-Man while watching the chitari to invade new york and it was just super funny the way they splice that together they run a bunch of like i follow a bunch of raimi memes that's what those memes are called that's kind of the genre of them i follow like a bunch of those accounts and they just all they do is spend each waking moment clipping memes from that trilogy and just putting them in random places like i remember there was one from the portals and it was peter parker doing the emo dance from the third movie of him coming out of the portal and everybody starts cheering in the audience that's fantastic. That's so good. Um, I was uh, I was watch a couple times. There's a couple of Instagram accounts that I was um, that were coming up on my feed, and it was stop what you're doing and just watch the audience react to certain things in in Endgame, and those things just in general, just it's like the the actual thing that happens is dope as fuck, but the audience reaction like those audience reaction videos seriously make it so much better i remember after we saw endgame that was like one of the first things i did was go check out youtube and just back then they didn't have the footage so it would just be uh them with a description of saying like what seems on the screen and just hearing those reactions was so high especially in infinity war because you got to hear all the sad little whimpers at the end of the film Oh, yeah. That was a big one too. Yeah, Vass, what do you have? You've been quiet for a while. I'm just thinking it all in. I got nothing. I don't know. I said my bit for now. <laughs> just, just like I uh, give up. <laughs> um, he said his piece. Did you at least see the? Did you at least see the Capone trailer? I did. Yeah. I I don't know what to make of it. Like I don't know. Like I don't know. I I'm, it makes me realize I know very little of Capone, and I don't know if they're just kind of piecing together a random story that is just out of nowhere or um or if they're actually working off like events that actually happened kind of thing uh so i have no idea how far it goes and i didn't even know this was even in talks or rolling and whatever and tom hardy attached to it. like he's he's good and stuff like that so i don't know is this be Al Capone? yeah okay and i think like it's a... said like in his later years 
it's it's his last days. Yeah, it's his deal. last days. So, and they're trying to prove that he he took the. I don't know. I can't remember what he. I can't remember exactly. I think he's trying to prove, uh, or there someone's trying to infiltrate him and find out where he's hitting a stash of cash or gold or whatever. So. And they aptly, I think it's called just Capone. So they're mm-hmm. going with like the Logan, yeah, route. Just give it the last name. That's it. It's the swan song. It's the final one. That's the end times for this character or whatever. Honestly, anytime that comes up, you know that they're going like it's it's just called the Logan in my mind from now on. But I don't know. I, I thought it looked really good. Hardy's awesome. They've got a pretty interesting cast like mm-hmm. Kyle McLaughlin, Matt Dillon um linda cardellini the uh noel fisher like it's it's a really interesting cast and he looks good in it and i'm sure it's going to be really good but it's essentially him succumbing to dementia and uh what does it say um the final days of the notorious gangster succumbing to dementia and reliving his past through tormenting memories Hmm. so that's pretty sweet yeah like i I, that's a great little synopsis where you're just like okay you know what's really interesting though Josh Trank is a director. What did he direct? Yeah. Does that mean? I don't know. You guys don't remember? No. He was the he was the Fantastic Four director, like the really failed one. Oh. Like the one where he got like that they split up the the one with Michael B. Jordan. Oh yeah. And then there was all that drama about him like destroying the house that he was living in and all the issues with the studio mm-hmm. and like. Wow. crazy backstory with this director and i and when i look when i saw that because i didn't know by ahead of time i was like oh that's hilarious because it was like almost four or five years ago that that movie came out and everyone was like this guy's gonna have a real tough time finding work mm-hmm. Jeez, yeah that that fantastic 2015 had, yeah that that had some potential but with the cast they had but just very fell very flat well i think it was also due to like studio interference and stuff like that. i don't think it was, right like i think that's why he was so like, i remember reading something about this i remember that like, i don't think it was his fault entirely i think this like fox was really up in there about what like doing what you want to do and stuff like that and it kind of as any director would it caused him to get you know angry like example justice league whether your opinion on it or not mm-hmm. the studio stepped in and like change the direction of the movie whether it would have sucked with Zack snyder finishing it or not the end result sucked because the studio stepped in and made all these changes and that's just always i don't think it's ever ended well for a movie when a studio has to step in and kind of call the shots yeah well sometimes it does work like there are cases where it has worked but it seems like traditionally it doesn't which is a fair point. So in that, in the case of the Josh Trank, it was both studio interference. And then the other one was like the, him himself after the movie came out, he tweeted like the, the day of the release, he's like, there was a movie of fantastic four that I wanted to make that something like the studio didn't mm-hmm. let me make or something. Like he put out a tweet complaining, right. Mm-hmm. Which despite what you feel about the project or like yourself, like, and I, and I get from the perspective of, being so into something and then having somebody else ruin it or you think somebody else ruin it you're either going to keep your mouth shut and bottle it in or let people know Mm -hmm. right because it's still his name as the director so he put out that tweet which wasn't the best thing in the world because then everyone's looking at him like oh this is the guy that if it doesn't go his way he's going to tweet to everybody that excuse me it's the studio's fault Mm -hmm. so i don't know it was like you like anthony mentioned it's kind of like both parties are at fault but it's just so funny because they're like at first it was everyone blaming the studio. Then there was the reports of Josh Trank being a little bit of a psycho, mm-hmm. and then after a while, people just forgot about it. And now he's back directing Tom Hardy in a Capone movie. So, you know, that's something. Well, it's like kind of with Ryan Johnson. You know, he fell with the Last Jedi, but Knives Out was a banger. So there's always potential for a comeback, mm-hmm. even though Last Jedi if was kind this of this is a him. banger. That's a great point. Yeah, that's a great point. If this ends up being like a huge movie, mm-hmm. which it looks like it might be, then this could be the one that brings him back. 100%, I agree. Tot- totes my goats. Um, yeah, what else you guys have? Uh, nothing. Nobody? No, well, come on, guys. For my word. <laughs> for uh, my theater. Or seriously, like I'm just like... I just got an email what before is we uh, started for my theater. And it was talking just about like updates 
and I like skimmed it because like I got this like literally as we were recording. Uh, they're talking about our provinces having you know lower cases, but their optimists or their optimism is tempered by the struggles in Ontario and Quebec. And they're talking about like mm-hmm. just what they want to do in the states right now because the theater I worked at is like a kind of it's not just in Canada. Uh, they're talking about their reopening strategy is to be open by July first, which is like. Mm fucking stupidly far actually not that far away it's like two months but that's still no, we're already halfway through april that's still a lot though it's like come on it's canada day <sighs> that's true I'm like jesus man i want to go to work i want to go outside mm-hmm. you and the rest of the world dude stay inside i hate you seeing people on snapchat i don't know if you guys I, you guys definitely wouldn't have this issue because no one your age is going on snapchat going to parties hanging out with a bunch of people no and, you know, posting it online, but it annoys me so much because I've been inside for, like, over a month. Where are these people's parents? Exactly. Like, my mom is posted up at the door. I cannot mm-hmm. even yeah. go down the stairs without being asked, where are you going? And it's like, downstairs. <laughs> yeah, what are you going to do? It's the way of the world, right? Yeah, but then the same That's people not, and... are also bitching about the quarantine and how it's stupid. And it's like, well, yeah, it's stupid. But if you stay inside, it'll be over. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because they, this is this is kind of like the and you know I don't want to go on too too much of a rant on this, but it's just like this is those moments where you know you have all those people that are like, oh, I know everything and I'm so smart and I'm like, you know, they, um, how can I put this? They think they know everything, mm-hmm. and then they get into situations where it's real life. You have to be an adult. You can't have everything your way. The world doesn't work as great as it did, you know, when you were pretending like you knew everything and you have to learn how to deal with it. And there's a large, large demographic of individuals that are incapable of dealing with things when shit hits the fan like this. Why? And they're the ones that go on spring break and then come back and all get tested positive for coronavirus and like do stupid shit like that. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, This is, this is like the, this is a reality check for a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff, like both good and bad. And unfortunately everyone's having to deal with it. And the good thing is we're all dealing with the same thing, but at the same time, it's like the people that pretended like they knew they had the world figured out and that they can handle everything and blah, blah, blah. Like this is the test. Like if you can deal with the fact that your life is not important and you could, you you not only affect other people, but you could actually potentially kill other people mm-hmm. just by you breaking the rules, so to speak. So. Well, I know uh, in Regina, it was a couple of weeks ago. I don't know if we talked about this on the cast, but someone tested positive, I think, for coronavirus and they were going outside and the police issued them a $2,800 fine. Good. Which is amazing because A, like that's a, it's like not a huge fine, but it's also like you don't, like you don't have to pay it. Well, like that's a huge fine to me. I'm not saying like I'm above that. Like that to me, that's like a stupid amount. But some people, they just kind of look at that like, well, whatever. But I'm glad they're actually cracking down on this and not just being passive about it. Because again, the quicker we all comply, the sooner it's over with. Yep, exactly. And, and, or uh, it gives the people that are actually fighting this thing enough time to, mm-hmm like find vaccines, find cures, find whatever they can find. Like, and as long as, and the thing is like, I don't know, it's obviously we're ending on a little bit more of a somber note than last time. But I mean, for the most part, it's one of those cases of this shit's, this shit is as real as it can get. And it's not going to end quickly. And you also don't want to prematurely get everybody outside and then have to go back and do it again. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. You know, cause that would suck. Like, cause that would suck, you know, like, Fast getting his job back is great, but it's only two guys that are operating or two two workers that are that are working. Ooh, right. So you made that, it. You're one of you're the fifty percent. Yep. Yeah. So I mean, like they but they're able to still practice their social distancing while working. Mm-hmm. Right. And and if if the if people in charge are looking at it from one at a time, it's gonna take a really long time, especially in the bigger mm-hmm. cities. But that's what it takes. This is kind of a whatever it takes type of situation. Yeah. But what if it fails? Well, if it fails and we fail together. Oh, it was more of an end game line, but you know what? I like the Infinity Oh, you War mean reference. that if it fails and I don't know what I'm going to do? 
<laughs> yeah, well, I, I, I don't think I'm the one that's going to have to make that decision. If it fails, then we all won't know what to do. But uh, anyways, that was it. That's my little timer. I'm liking these little short 35-minute episodes. Mm-hmm. And uh, if the sound is different, it's because we're now recording from Zencaster. Um, I found this one on YouTube. A lot of people are saying this is the best thing to record on. I'm hoping that's the case. We'll see how the audio turns out. And that's why I wasn't working yesterday because it does involve the internet more heavily than Zoom did for some reason. Um, And also Zoom got hacked and everybody's shit was being sold off in the dark web. So Mm -hmm. if you use Zoom, stop, change your passwords and just be careful out there because there's still people that are doing their shit. Um, One last thing quickly, sorry. Oh, it's very quick. Uh, I was talking to Jesse before the podcast and he was saying he was listening to our podcast as he played animal crossing so quick shout out to jesse nice thanks jesse oh and another thing actually arturo where are you dude (laughs) arturo if you're listening like send me an email i I can't find you on instagram anthony can't find you like we are having a real tough time finding you dude i would like and i hope it's just because you're working like crazy because we're actually worried so (laughs) arturo if you're listening to this Send us a quick message just letting us know. SOS or respond to my email. Yes. Something. Something, something. Just yeah. Let us know you're what you're doing good. Um so yeah, thanks again for listening to another week of the F word. I hope you guys are enjoying um the actual video part of it. I tried recording some reviews of a show, but it kept failing because I haven't done one in a long time and I completely forgot how to do it. So I'm gonna keep working on some shit. Uh, here in the condo, which is a very different setup. Um, you can find me on Twitter at the F-Words G. You can email us at the F-Word podcast at gmail.com. Make sure you're following the F word on Facebook and Instagram and the F-Word podcast, sorry, on F word and Instagram. And make sure you're following the Lazy and Canadian on Instagram. Guys, that's all I got. You? Nope. Yep. All done. I'm G. It's your boy, Anthony. It's Vass. And we are out.